Well, it's amazing. It really is. Uh, it was something I, I certainly was never really dreaming about. And uh, actually, for the past whatever it's been, about a year of doing it, um, it's just been a lot of work, like everything else, making sure that everything was right. And as Marilyn will tell you, uh, I'm somewhat of a control freak. So uh, it's uh, when you're dealing with thousands and thousands of drawings uh, over the 50 plus years, in different venues and different genres and everything else and trying to make decisions, you know, like which of your children are you going to lead to drown, you know, kind of a thing. It's a little challenging. So I don't think I've, I've really got it, but I'm getting the sense now that this is kind of a big deal. This is not chopped liver. This is, this is, this is nice. This is really good. And I'm feeling kind of elated uh, about it. It's terrific. Mort and I looked at hundreds of cartoons and hundreds of drawings, and every week he'd come back with more, and I finally said, Mort, please don't go to your locker anymore. <laughs> we have enough, we have enough. And <clears throat> so we, we, I looked at these cartoons over a period of months, and we finally got to the point where we had to choose the checklist. And we whittled it down to maybe 200 pieces, which is way more than what we have here. And I took him up, and I took him to a room here at the, in the Historical Society, and we laid them all out over the tables. And I know he said it was like not taking all your babies. I felt the same way. There are there loads of cartoons that I loved that we just didn't have room to put in. No, I don't worry about being uh, uh, offensive. The very first person who uh, was publishing me was Paul Krasner, uh, and he published uh, a newspaper called The Realist, which was the most offensive, uh, iconoclastic publication that there was. And so it was automatic, because I guess the way I was feeling anyway, to be in that publication. And uh, every once in a while, uh, he would say, you know, don't, don't give me this stuff. You should take this stuff to the Middle America magazine, the Saturday Evening Post, because otherwise here you're preaching to the choir. And sometimes he was right. It was, a, I don't know, there's one here that's a, dealing with race, uh, a black girl in a tenement house, uh, and uh, a marijuana cartoon in the spring. This is in the Saturday Evening Post, the most general magazine it could be. And uh, I wasn't particularly thinking, uh, again, of purposely being offensive like that. It was simply that it was an issue on my mind, and I wanted to air it and show, you know, what I thought about it. That was about it. I wanted to get an idea on it. And this is in the early days when he was just elected. And here he is pulling out daisies, you know. Usually it's, you love me, you love me not, love me, you love me not. And this is turned out, he's saying, not under investigation. I am under investigation. I've been watching Mort's cartoons for years in The New Yorker. He, he, he gets it. He gets it immediately. And he gets it in a way that when we read his cartoons or look at them, uh, they, they hit home. And, and he has a way of telling that uh, in, a, in, a that might, in a manner that might take a writer a paragraph to do, to report it in. And Mort does it in one quick picture. Today show, 
because this is on election day, and uh, we were trying to presuppose what was going to be going on that evening. And uh, this is what I was drawing while talking at the same time, and also yeah. through the shots and stuff. Well, uh, if I think I said, I certainly hope that they get uh, a few laughs and some smiles. But with, <clears throat> with, with that uh, smile and with those smiles, I hope that they get maybe a little bit of an insight of a different, on a different subject, on a subject that's been very common or relative uh, to their lives. Um, we look at things, we cartoonists, looking at things very obliquely. The best of us, of them, are the political cartoonists who are really, really nailing stuff every day, right in the mouth. And uh, much of it is not particularly f funny, but it's certainly trenchant and very, very observant. Uh, I try to go a little bit the other way. I like to make you laugh, and then afterwards you say, you know, there may be an idea there. And that would make me very happy to know that, that, that that's occurred.